Whatever God wants for you, you will get today in Jesus' name. Miracle. Freedom. Power. Healing. Everything in completeness in your life in Jesus' name. Today, God has been good, but today especially, he'll be good unto you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. And we thank you for your goodness and for your love. You love us so much that everything we need for life, Everything we need for heaven, everything we need every day, every moment in our lives, you grant unto us, and we are praying today, you shower your blessings upon everyone in Jesus' name. Joy and happiness for everybody. Freedom, salvation for everyone. And the power that makes us stand and stand firm and start healthy and whole grant to everyone in jesus name bless everyone beyond their expectation in jesus mighty name we pray God has blessed you, you can say that. We're looking at the word of God today. We're looking at Mark chapter 10 verse 19. Mark chapter 10 verse 19. And Jesus stood still and he commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, he calleth thee. Look at that. Be of good comfort. The man had been very much expectant. He was the man on the side of the road. And then he heard people moving and he inquired, what's happening? I see, I hear many people because he was blind. And he said, is Jesus of Nazareth? Is Jesus the healer? Is Jesus the miracle worker? Is Jesus that breaks every yoke and breaks every shackle? Is passing by. And I'm here and he's going to pass by me no he'll not pass by you and so he began to call he began to cry he said son of david have mercy on me your day of mercy has come and the people around, they shouted him down. You know, sometimes when you're calling upon the Lord, you have something deep you're asking for. There's that extraneous noise that is coming. And there is that strange noise that is coming. And the strange noise, extraneous noise, is saying, shut up, shut up, shut down. And the man cried a great deal the more. And eventually, Jesus. Jesus had him. Jesus will hear you. He will turn your life around. And he said, call him. And the same people that had been shouting him down, they were the people that said, be of good cheer now. Be of good comfort now. Your expectation is realized. He has heard your cry. I see that people here don't say amen on Sunday morning. And he said, he called you. And he rose up. He threw away his garment. I'm just telling you the story. It's the garment of blindness. It's the garment of his problem. It's the garment that he had been wearing to say, I am not among the people that see. I'm not among the people that know. I'm not among the people that shine. I am one of the people in terrible darkness. And I want my healing and he threw that badge and that identity identifying mark of the blind threw that away and he came to Jesus and Jesus said what do you want? Jesus knew of course
because even we ordinary people we know the man is blind you can see that he's blind you see the badge of a blindness and he has thrown that away what was he looking for he was looking for his sight he was looking that the sun of righteousness will shine upon him and he will have a sight and jesus still asked there are people that god knows i need salvation yes he knows but you must tell him he knows i need healing yes he knows but you must tell him he knows so one the bondage broken and yet you must tell him are you here and you need something and during the time of prayer you're busy here you're busy there you're running here you're running there won't you have time if this time of the crusade pass, uh, passes on and you do not have uh, any chance to tell the lord and then everything is done everything is gone and you're still there why will you allow the burden of duty and the burden of activity to make you keep quiet and everything is going on well somebody having salvation their holiness experience their sanctification their power of the holy ghost there deliverance there healing there and yet Yet you don't have any chance to ask the Lord today is your day yeah. you will ask and the Lord will grant you and so the Lord said according to your faith be it unto you and you know in life many of us according to our fears it's unto us we fear defeat we fear the enemy we fear and in our life it's according to our fear it's been unto us many people fret and they worry and according to your fretting according to your worry it's unto you look at life why don't we turn around today and say instead of fear instead of fretting i am going to manifest faith today and according to my faith it will be unto you something good will happen to you today we're talking about heavenly invitation to holistic freedom without further bondage heavenly invitation he calls you be of good cheer and be of good comfort. All the things of the past, all the darkness of the past, all the disease of the past, everything, the deprivation of the past, everything is gone. Be of good cheer. He is here where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. He is here, is there by your side and he calls you heavenly invitation he calls you to holistic that word holistic is it means complete it means it's the total it means a whole in every area of our lives in your mind in your soul in your spirit in your body in your eyesight in your ear in your education in your profession holistic 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 freedom without further bondage in our lives your life will never remain the same again we're looking at this on the three subtitles we're looking at number one the assuring call to forgiveness and healing assuring assuring he gives us assurance the same yesterday today and forever the god that changes not and the god that gives us a promise and then he gives us the provision and balaam said he has blessed you and i cannot reverse it nothing will reverse the blessing of god in your life today in jesus name you can do better than that amen number two the ascertained call the sure call the unmistakable call you know god loves you i mean you in particular he loves everybody but you in particular he gives you assurance and there is this ascertained call to freedom in holiness you know bondage hinders holiness if you allow it oppression hinders holiness 
if you allow it persecution hinders holiness if you allow it the activities of the enemy that want you to turn your face away from Jesus and just turn on them they get to attention they are raised to attention and they say don't look at Christ look on us if you agree with that if you are pinched to them and you are looking in the wrong direction in the wrong person on the wrong personality you will never never be holy when you look at enemies you get angry you get frustrated you get depressed and then you begin to complain when will they leave me alone and we cannot be holy while we're looking, gazing, and concentrating on those distractions. But when freedom comes to you, when you're free in your soul, and free in your spirit, and free in your personality, and your hands can swing, and your legs can move, and then there's no blockage, there's no hindrance between you and that person that wants you always to be concentrating on him, on her. It will be easy for you to be holy because he gives you peace. And you have peace with all men and peace with everybody. And when, he, when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, it will make him to be at peace even with his enemies. Then you have the freedom that allows you to keep the holiness of life. There are certain call to the freedom in holiness. Now, number three, is the ascending call to the fullness from heaven. The ascending call, the voice is getting higher and louder and more impressive and more intensive that heaven is calling you. And then you begin, you get nearer heaven than earth because you want to have the fullness coming from heaven let's look at number one number one we're looking at the assuring call to forgiveness and healing we're looking at Isaiah chapter 55 I'm reading there from verse 6 it says seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near verse 7 it says in verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way the way of death the way that seems right to a man but the ends thereof are the ways of death and it, God doesn't want us to die so he says let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts our thoughts lead us to wrong action somebody has done something against you and then you have thoughts and thoughts and thoughts you forget the promises of God the power of God you forget everything the Lord offers you all you can think about look at what he said about me look at what he did against me all you can think about is look at the injury what am I going to do back and get even what am I going to do and get and retaliate? You know, those thoughts, eh, they spoil our lives. They, they ruffle our lives. It says, therefore, the righteous man who is thinking, not thinking of progress, not thinking of power, not thinking of, you know, good, good things in life, but thinking is bad, is thinking to be worse. It says, let the righteous man forsake his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. This is your day. Three things we're looking at here. Number one. Number one. The promise of forgiveness and healing. Number two. The power to forgive and heal. Number three. The partakers of his forgiveness and healing. Quickly number one. Number one. The promise of forgiveness and healing. He will forgive you. He will heal you. Amen. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, If my people, 
which are called by my name shall humble themselves I'm surprised God is saying that even though he is not as humble as I want now, he's still my people. You see the love of God. See the mercy of God. Even though we're not at the height where we ought to be. Even though we're not in the place we ought to be. He said, you are my people. How can I give up on you? You are my people. How can I, you know, just push you aside? He will steal, he will forgive you. He will heal you. If he calls you his people, and you call yourself in agreement with him, his people, then the blessing, the promise will come upon your life. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, it takes humility to pray because when we pray we're saying i cannot do this by myself god in heaven you are higher than i am you are greater than i am you're more mighty and powerful than i am i want you to do this for me it takes humility to come and confess it takes humility to come and lie low in the presence of the lord and say lord this is what i need and when you come in humility like that they will answer your prayer if we remain in pride if we remain in our ways if we remain in our own situation i will say i'm all right the way i am you see blessing doesn't come that way it is when we humble ourselves when we lower ourselves and when we bend low in the sight of the lord if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face it's difficult to seek to conflicting things at the same time if we're seeking money if we're seeking position if we're seeking the things of dust and ashes if we're seeking the things of the world and our mind and our heart and our devotion is all committed to that it's difficult to see god at the same time so we have to remove our heart our mind and everything we have in a consecration and commitment and devotion we have to remove our mind away from that and seek the lord and he says and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways you know we have to turn somebody says i want the lord to bless me but i won't give up this i won't give up that if god wants you to give up that and you are not willing to obey him and you're not willing to commit yourself unto him how do you want okay you want to disobey god but you want god to obey you and answer your prayer you want to disregard god and you want god to look at you and favor you and answer your prayer is that fair if you are god will you appreciate that do unto him as you want him to do unto you and so he says we turn from a wicked ways then only then after that as you do what is humanly possible and what god has commanded the human to do he says then after the repentance after the giving up of the things he wants you to give up he says only then after then will i hear from heaven look at this look at this and will forgive their sin and will heal their land there is forgiveness there's healing as we turn to the lord and we say lord here am i the lord will answer you today you'll humble yourself you'll pray you'll seek his face you will forsake the things he does not approve in your life and definitely assuredly that healing that forgiveness will come we're looking at um, numbers 
chapter 14, chapter 21 rather, reading from verse 4. And they journeyed from the mount for by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way discouragement comes to everyone. But the best thing for you to do, if you cannot control your emotion, your feeling, your reaction, when there's discouragement, lock up, lock yourself up and say nothing withdraw from the public you're discouraged because that's discouragement if you don't do something lock up yourself you will say what you shouldn't have said you will do what you shouldn't have done and what you say what you do in discouragement will bring you to greater problem in life look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says and the people speak against God and against Moses wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die. You'll be thinking of death, my friend. What has happened is not, it's not that heavy. Other people have gone through that and they just, you know, go their way and they're happy, they're joyful. They don't allow that small thing to make them think of death. Why have my alive stopped that kind of language about yourself is an issue that God will resolve for you. And then it says, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread. That's not true. Manna was available for them every day. Discouragement makes you to tell lies on God. What has it done for me? You slept, you woke up, that's God. You have life and you have vision, you have a goal, that's God. You are alive and you are pursuing something, that's God. Because of the small challenge remaining. They said, what well, has he brought us up? out of Egypt to die in this wilderness there's no there's no bread but there's manna the bread of heaven neither is there any water and our soul loathed this light bread this light bread but you said there was no bread and because of that problems came upon them and the Lord said lift up a brazen serpent and tell them everyone that looks on that brazen serpent I will forgive and I will heal look at John chapter 3 verse 14 John chapter 3 verse 14 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up why verse 15 that whosoever believeth in him should not perish Christ has made the provision that you will not perish Amen, Amen. Yeah. but have eternal life it will give everyone eternal life in that eternal life there is forgiveness in that eternal life there is freedom in that eternal life there is healing in that eternal life there is a happy joyful purposeful life we're looking at number two here number two is the power to forgive and heal the power to forgive and heal God has appointed Christ, his only begotten son, so that whatever anyone has done, if he comes to God through Christ, forgiveness will come. And freedom will come. And healing will come. We're looking at Matthew chapter 9, verse 6. In Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 6, that ye may know 
but that she may know that the son of man that the son of god christ jesus has power on earth to forgive sins has power on earth to forgive sins now if he had power on earth to forgive sin now he has gone to heaven he has that same power jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever he has that power even now to forgive and you know when you are up you see all the globe you see everything those who went to the moon some decades ago they looked down and were able to see the whole earth and the heaven where christ has gone is much higher than the moon and so he sees everyone and now he has power in heaven to forgive today he'll forgive you and then he says and to heal he has the power to forgive then said he to the sick of the palsy arise take up thy bed house that was there and he arose and departed to his house that's what will happen to you today you'll arise and leave your sickness behind you'll arise and leave all the disease behind the things that torment your life and the things that torture your life you'll arise leave everything behind and you go free you are healed look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says but when the multitude saw it they will see they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men, not ordinary man, unto the Son of Man, unto the Son of God, unto Christ, who has done all that for us. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 13. In Acts chapter 5, verse 30. <clears throat> The God of our fathers restored Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree on a cross. In verse 31, him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior is the father God in heaven that has appointed him approved of him anointed him that he will be the savior and the healer and uh, to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins he gives us we just come to him already is the only one appointed approved anointed of the heavenly father that will give us repentance and the repentance he gives a genuine repentance not superficial repentance not make believe repentance not insincere repentance he gives us the genuine the genuine repentance and because the repentance came from him he now follows up with forgiveness in acts chapter 10 verse 38 acts 10 verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth of the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all how many people am i there am i included i'm asking for you are you included healing healing he'll heal you among all the people it will heal today in jesus name and then it says he healed all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him look at number three here number three the partakers of his forgiveness 
and healing. The partakers of his uh, healing and of his forgiveness. We're coming to Psalm 103. 103. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Uh, my brother, my sister, if you want to receive forgiveness and healing from God, uh, we cannot be grudging God. God, look at me. I pay my tithe and offering. Look at me. I walk for the Lord. Look at me. I do this. I run up. I run down. And uh, you know, I'm sick now. <laughs> we don't get healed by grumbling. We don't get healed by fighting God. We don't get healed by frowning at God. You come with a cheerful mind. You come with an open heart. Whatever you are going through, that, that's, not, that's not God. Jesus healed all that are oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. You don't revenge on God what the devil is doing. You don't retaliate on God what the devil is doing. You come, you understand. Your problem is not God. The barrenness is not God. And the depravity, uh, the destruction is not God. And you know, that's what the people of the world that's what they think when an accident happens they say they say work of God and when somebody has lost something precious they say that's the work of God they say just accept just accept can we question God that's what God has not God is not our problem God is our savior it's our redeemer it's our helper it's the one that says I will help Help you so come with a joyful mind an expectant mind bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits what are the benefits for you here today look at verse 3 in verse 3 oh forgiveth how many iniquities? How many iniquities? Well, when you come to God, He forgives you. And then as you get back home, you kneel down, you are coming from the service and say, God, I am sorry. Forgive me. How about the one you got just now, a few minutes ago? Then the following Sunday, God, forgive me. I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. I thought he made you a new creature when he forgave you last Sunday. When he forgave you that time, you offered yourself and you submitted yourself to God. Let's change our prayer. Let's understand. He forgives, he forgives. Who forgives? All thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. <laughs> Forgiveness has come and healing has come beyond the forgiveness and the healing. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? You will not be destroyed. Until you finish everything the Lord has said you will do on earth, nothing will touch your life. Say, until I finish. Everything God has ordained for me on earth. My life is secured. You know, there are people that, you know, carry insecurity on their mind. There are people that carry insecurity in their thoughts. Every time they want to go out, they carry insecurity in their mind. You are special before God. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction and crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Look at verse 5. It says, Who satisfies thy mouth with good things? Give me a good amen. amen. Then it said, So that. Those two words, so that. 
It's a connection between your mouth and then your life so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. It's talking about it satisfies your mouth with good things at the primary level. It satisfies your mouth with good appropriate food. There are foods, kinds of foods that we eat and it doesn't strengthen our lives. There's too much sugar in your system and it gives you sugar diabetes. There's too much salt. After the people who are prepared the food, they put enough salt, then you sprinkle more and it gives you hypertension. And then somebody has drunk a water and water is the most refreshing liquid you can drink. And he wants to drink alcohol upon that. That destroys your health. Other people, they have taken something very good and nice and they want to put the smoke of tobacco in. You see, our mouth is connected with the weakness of the body or the strength of the body but when God plans everything that you take it satisfies your mouth with good things so that the youth the renewed strength the renewed vigor and the renewed power comes on and the youth is renewed like the eagles Amen, Amen. You should be asking yourself, <clears throat> are there things that come into my mouth and they make me weak? And they make me without strength. And there are things that come inside my mouth that you've been eating and eating and eating, and then you're losing your strength. We, we change that. We turn that around and we we'll say we're now going to be satisfied in our mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Good things will happen to everyone. We're looking at James chapter 5. In James chapter 5, we're looking at verse 14. In verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord, in verse 15, verse 15 says, And the prayer of faith shall save, heal the sick. You didn't say amen to that one. Uh, let me ask you a simple question. When any elder, any preacher, any overseer of the GS, when any of us, when we stand here and we pray, what kind of prayer do you think we pray? Is it prayer of doubting or the prayer of faith? Any elder, any preacher, any pastor, when he comes to pray, he believes in his heart that there is a God in heaven that answers prayer. And he's sure that God will hear. And so that elder comes to stand and he says, let us pray in your mind, understand. He is representing God and he prays. What kind of prayer? The prayer of faith. And it says, the prayer of faith shall save oh why didn't you say heal well the same greek word that says save is the same greek word that says heal sozo that's in the sozo there and that's why it says it will save it will heal it will deliver the seed and when i stand and pray for you after this service what kind of prayer am i going to pray the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith is not the man it's not his title it's not because you know i am so and so it is because he whoever he is a man a woman the minister he 
prays the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith shall save the sick heal the sick and the Lord shall raise him up look at this and if he has committed sins they shall be forgiven him healing forgiveness forgiveness and healing all in the same verse it has come to you we're coming now to point number two in point number two we're looking at the ascertained call to freedom in holiness it gives us something that is certain and something that is sure a certain call he is the one calling us from heaven he says i call you to come and have freedom I call you to come and have healing. I call you to come and have holiness. And because the one that calls, that's why he does what he promises to do. Uh, there are people that say, Pastor, I've been in this church now for 20 long years, 30 long years, and I believe in holiness. I believe it's in the Bible. I believe God demands it. I believe God can do it. But pastor, I don't know how to have it. You will have it today. Because you see, he is the one that calls. And faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. You've been struggling to do it by yourself. I will not get angry anymore. I will not backbite anymore. I will not have bitterness or hatred against anybody anymore. And the moment you say that, an offense comes. And say, uh -uh. even though I said I will not, but this one, if I'm not angry, I'll be a dummy. <laughs> no. You see, when you come to God, it takes hold of your life and it calls you to holiness and it calls you to peace with people and as you kneel down there or you stand up there and you say lord all of my heart i bring unto you cleanse me and wash me and purge me and purify me and you believe that he has promised and he cannot fail he will do a work in your heart you go out now and somebody does something, they spray the splash, dirty water on your clean clothes. You look at them, you smile. He doesn't know what he's doing. He didn't do that deliberately. It's because of that pothole there. You give a reason, a good reason for the people that may do anything against you. And your heart cools down. It's no more hurt. Your heart is no more burning or the fire of hunger. Big anger because he gives you the freedom in holiness we're looking at John chapter 8 verse 30 it says as he spake these words many believed on him in verse 31 verse 31 then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed? If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed? At, at school, I learned a subject that I mastered. But you know, since that time, I didn't study that subject again. I've shifted to another subject. And because I didn't continue, if I were to take the exam I took, that I had a good result, if I go to take that exam now, I will not be able to make head or tail about anything. You know why? I didn't continue studying that subject reading that subject learning that subject every day the same thing you come to the lord and he gives you salvation he gives you sanctification and then you say praise the lord i got it and this is real and genuine but you don't continue refreshing yourself relearning and you don't continue in committing consecrating yourself you don't continue in examining that thing appreciating that thing that you've got 
before long everything will look like is fizzled away if you continue in my words then are ye my disciples indeed verse 32 and ye shall know the truth the truth will kneel before if we don't continue learning and reading and studying we'll forget we'll forget and then we will not know the truth like we knew the truth 30 years ago foundation members deeper life you came 40 years ago 45 years ago and you were schooled and you were deep and you were refreshed and you were renewed in holiness but since those 45 years now you have not continued refreshing your mind and looking at the same thing so that the depths and the height and the length and the breadth of holiness you had at that time you don't you are not like that now and people even say brother is not like he used to be sister is not like he, she used to be but today god will make us have a restoration of everything in jesus name we're looking at three things number one we're looking at the promise of freedom and holiness number two the power for freedom with holiness number three the partakers of freedom through holiness look at number one number one we have the promise of freedom and holiness look at john chapter 8 verse 36 in john chapter 8 verse 36 if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed and remember all the promises of god are ye and amen yes and amen in christ and this is the promise that ye shall be free indeed we're looking at luke chapter 1 verse 72 in luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the must the mercy promised to our fathers and remember his holy covenant in verse 74 verse 74 it says that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies praise the lord praise the lord you need to understand delivered out of the hands of our enemies it doesn't mean that the enemies died no doesn't always mean that let's say for example here you are and the enemy is in one local village in your country and then you get passport and visa and the, and the enemy doesn't have access to passport or visa and after getting the visa you travel to a far country and he doesn't have your number he doesn't have your location where you live you're far away and he's not dead but he cannot touch you anymore any stone he throws at you will land in his premises he cannot get to the country where you have gone because god now has translated you to the kingdom of his dear son the enemy is still alive but she is he's useless he cannot touch you anymore i'm talking about you you are transferred you are translated to the kingdom of his dear son you're free look at this it says that we might serve him without fear you know sometimes when you see people every day you see they are frowning you see their anger on their faces and you hear their words and they say i will deal with you fear comes in your heart but when you relocate you can't see his angry face anymore and you cannot see or hear all the words is trying to say you only see better people happier people 
smiling people, loving people, all your fears are gone. I invite you to come to the presence of Christ and to look away from the angry faces that threaten you and look away and block your ears to the angry voices that speak to you and hear the voice of gentle, merciful, loving Christ fear has gone in verse 45 uh, verse 75 uh, it says in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life will he do it i said will he do it come to number two here number two we're looking at the power for freedom with holiness the power for freedom with holiness in first thessalonians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 12. first thessalonians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 12. see what the lord has said concerning you concerning me concerning us and the lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you then in verse 13 in verse 13 it says to the end for the purpose he may establish you establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before god even our father at the coming of our lord jesus christ with all saints he will do it he has the power he has, he has given the promise and he says this is what he will do how do i get that i come to isaiah chapter 40 and i'm reading from verse 28 and he says as thou not known as thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he giveth power to the faith. He giveth power to the faith. He giveth power to the faith. You know, many years ago when I, you know, was not like I am now, many, many years ago, I used to watch the boxers and they punch each other, punch each other. And then one of them will get tired fainting. And the other fellow is still keeping on punching him but the man is now fainting. Eventually, the uh, referee will come and separate them so that he doesn't kill the man. You know, in life, that is like that. You're punching, you're striving, you're fighting. You're fighting against sin, against Satan, against uh, all that persecution. And you're fighting. And if it continues, you're weary, you faint and the power to stand and the power to be what you had been at the beginning of the fight you don't have that anymore is that at that position now you come to him who gives power to the fainting and life will come back strength will come back the ability will come back the vision will come back it says he giveth power give it power every day he gives the power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength and then in verse 30 he tells us even the youths even the young shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall because there is no supply of new strength and new power and they're fainting that's why they fall and then in verse 31 it says but they 
that wait upon the Lord. I will not go out until he refreshes the power, he renews the strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. That's talking about you. And it's, I said he's talking about you. They shall walk and not faint. All the fainting in your life, the frightening in your life, the weakness in your life, as you wait upon the Lord, as you ask him, it will renew everything you have lost in your system, in your spiritual life, in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three here. Number three, the partakers of freedom through holiness. The partakers of uh, freedom through holiness. We're looking at uh, Second Peter chapter 1. We're looking at verse 3. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, according uh, as his divine power. Not according to your feeling, according to your fainting, according, according to your the depreciation of power in your life. It's according to his divine power he has given unto us. He has given unto me. He has given unto me. You wanted to drink cool, cold water so that you can satisfy the dryness you feel. And you ask maybe your wife, you ask maybe your child, hey, can you get me cold water from there? And then you look away, you're doing other things, waiting for the cold water. And the cold water has been put on the table. And a good uh, glass of water. And, uh, but because you didn't look that way, you didn't know it had been provided for you. You say, ah, darling, what's happening? I asked for cold water. I'm dying of thirst. And darling said, but it's there. I put it there from the moment you spoke. But you didn't know. The Lord has provided everything you need for your holiness. It's right there. And it's at your reach. And the moment you ask him, he said, look at that. I put it there since how, since, uh, how long ago. I didn't know. But now you know. I said, now you know. Holiness available for you. Holiness provided for you. It says, according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. That's holiness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Your life will be glorious. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, it says, Whereby a giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers, partakers, partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. We're looking at First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That's the human part. That's your part. That's my part. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You see, when we're saved, we're staying from evil. Sin? No. Iniquity? No. Transgression? No. But after that salvation, there are things called appearance of evil. Let me explain. You are a teacher and you go from house to house to teach these young people. And this, uh, this one now in this family, they have a daughter, a girl. And she's grown up. But she's still in high school. And the father or the mother employed you. Teach her. Let her make a good grade in her studies. And you happen to be master in important subjects. And so you always come. 
But as days go by, you are getting infatuated, interested in the girl. I, but you don't say anything or do anything. You know? And you come to teach her this day. And you close the door. And you lock the door. And you teach and the innocent girl. You are, you are the teacher. You are the master. Locking the door like that. And then the mother just wanted to ask something from the daughter. And saw that the door is locked. Uh -uh. Knocks the door. Eventually, you open the door. Teacher, what's happening? Why are you locking the door? I'm not doing anything with I'm just teaching her. Why lock the door? Uh, that's an appearance of evil. Evil can come like that, and then the parents can begin to suspect you. Abstain from all appearance of evil. The file you have in the in the office, and the person comes for the file. You put it under the desk, and you put it in the drawer there, and you lock it up. And where is my file? Where is my file? I need this uh, something urgently, and you are unsacking here and there. What's the meaning of that? Are you looking for bribes? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Your friends, uh, you know, they come and they are drinking their alcohol. And you are there with them. And so as they are drinking, uh, uh, they say, how about you? You feel ashamed to say, I don't drink. And then you get a bottle of alcohol. And they are drinking. And you, you are pretending you are not drinking. But you pour it in your glass. And you hold it. Is that not an appearance of evil? There are things that will appear as if you are doing evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. In verse 23, it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Will it happen? Will it happen? Look at verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He'll do it in our lives. He'll do it and give us an unforgettable experience of sanctification and holiness in Jesus' name. Point number three now. In point number three, we have the ascending call to his fullness from heaven ascending call that is he called us before he upgraded the call he's upgrading the call and he's giving us a higher call today than we ever had in john chapter 10 reading from verse 10 john 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy he will not steal anything from me he will not kill me <laughs> that's how you say your own he will not cut short the program the plan of god in your life in jesus name and he will not destroy me he will not destroy me you know, that fellow there is a destroyer. He doesn't know the face of anybody. Young, old, boy, girl, man, woman, that fellow destroyer. I'm not pointing at anybody. I'm, you know, just pointing, you know, preaching. And you know, that's a destroyer. And then you carry yourself there. And this person doesn't differentiate gentleman, but, um, aggressive man, anybody that comes to his vicinity, if you carry yourself there, he destroys. Why? If we know that this personality, the devil, he goes about, he's looking for whom to destroy, devour. Why will you carry yourself to them? To herbalist? to 
the servants of Satan, to the people that are thirsty of blood, why will you befriend them? Why will you get near them? Why don't you come out from among them? So that you do not sell yourself to a destroyer. That's what the devil does. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly abundant life for you three things we're looking at number one we're looking at the promise of the fullness in the holy ghost the promise of the fullness in the holy ghost number two the power through the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Number three, the partakers of the fullness of the Holy Ghost. You know, we have the promise, then we do the prayer, then we become the possessors of the power, and then we have the real power and fullness of the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed I'm saved? Good. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe I'm sanctified? Wonderful. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Look at number one. In number one, we're looking at the promise of the fullness of the Holy Ghost. We're looking at Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 13. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, remover, forgiveness of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I will receive. You will receive. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop asking the Lord because he gives the Holy Ghost to them that ask him. Verse 39. In verse 39, for the promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. Are there some things you have you have not gone to claim? Sometimes you come out of college or you come out of the university and they give you, they say, yes, you passed. Yes, you have a good grade here and they give you a temporary certificate. They're still printing the original, the real certificate, but you have the temporary certificate and it spells everything there. And then they say, come back, come back for the original, for the real one. But you know it's there. You know the way back to your colleges, the same place you uh, did, uh, you know, all those years, the same place you are going to get that certificate, the same place you got salvation, the same place you got sanctification, is the same place you are going to get the baptism and the power in the Holy Ghost. But you didn't go to collect the original. After all, I have the evidence here, the temporary certificate. You know what? You want to have a particular employment and it's the highest of the high. And then they say, present your documents and you put temporary certificate there. They throw it back at you. Where is the original? It's in the college. You have not gone to collect it. Well, go and collect before you came back another person Person having the same qualification, he has original, he has got the job. Why don't you go there? It will take your time. You need that power. You need that baptism, immersion, and on the Holy Ghost. And it says, for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the power through the fullness of the Holy Ghost. The power, the power. You will have power. Not just you know, some people, they say, I have the Holy Ghost. Pastor, can I sh uh, show you I have the Holy Ghost? I say, go ahead. And then they begin to shake. And I say, that's the Holy Ghost. 
Anybody can shake, even a sinner can shake like that. Have the reality of the power of God in your life. You will have power. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And ye shall receive power. Always think about that. I speak in tongues. Go beyond that. Ye shall receive power. I shake and shake. Ye shall receive power. And then, there's a way my head will shake. When somebody uh, talks about something, and the Holy Ghost comes, and my head will shake. Uh -huh. Ye shall receive power. Power to speak confidently. Power to preach effectively. Power to heal the sick. Power to, to deliver the oppressed. Power to reproduce the miracles of Christ. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I pray that power will come on the beloved children of God, sanctified children of God today in Jesus name we're coming to number three here number three we're looking at the partakers of the fullness of the Holy Ghost the partakers the partakers we're looking at John chapter 7 John chapter 7 we're reading from verse 37 on the last day that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried with a loud voice, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, that's what stands between us and receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. We desire, we thirst, we passionate. We we'll seek him. We we'll come to him. He remembers what he has done. He has saved us. And that Savior said, come back. And we come back. He sanctifies us. And that sanctifier says, come back. And we come back. And we have a desire. Very strong desire, and we're passionate and thirsty. And because we're thirsty, it's like if I don't get water to drink, I will not be myself. The times thirst gets to that level that we can't concentrate on any other thing. We are so thirsty, we must drink when you understand everything i should have done i couldn't do because i lack the power of the Holy Ghost, the boldness the energy the, the resources i should have i do not have them because i am missing the agency of all power in my life and you are so desperate now and you say I must have the power of the Holy Ghost that's what it takes that Jesus Christ saying if any man thirst let him leave everything he's doing let him focus on this power of the Holy Ghost and come unto me unto me who saved him unto me who sanctified him let him come unto me he is not a stranger to me i know him he knows me as savior sanctifier let him come unto me and dream look at verse 38 in verse 38 he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly, out of his innermost being, out of his inner man shall flow rivers 
of living water he says as you come at salvation he gives us it's like we draw water out of the well of salvation but now as we come it's not just a drop of water a glass of water it's not just a punch of water it is now rivers of living water out of his innermost being out of his inner man will gush out will flow out rivers of living water verse 39 it says but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him they that believe on the Savior, salvation. They that believe on the sanctifier, they have sanctification. They that believe on the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Those are the people that have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. They speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified now he is glorified he sees at the right hand of the father on earth and being exalted to sit by the father he has not poured down and given us this holy ghost which he now see and hear blessings have come for you freedom forgiveness sanctification holiness and the fullness of heaven in your life today in jesus name and as you don't hear anyone any extraneous voice as you don't see anyone any strange personality a stranger in the meeting as you don't pay attention to them and you focus on god and you focus on christ and you focus on the one that came and sacrificed and he gave his life for you and he's giving you the promise he's giving you the nature and the nature of heaven and all those strangers you block them away from your sight and you block them away from your mind and you say jesus here am i today i want what you have i want what you provide i want that forgiveness i want that healing i want uh, that freedom and i want that holiness and i want that fullness coming from heaven and your mind and your heart and your life is centered on god and you are asking you come seeking the lord that heavenly virtue that heavenly power that heavenly anointing will come upon your life in jesus name let all strange voices be silenced before you all strange signs be silenced before you let the lord carry them out and carry them away so that they can leave you with god and there's nothing between you and god and with all your heart and with all your mind you say lord i want what you have for me i want what you have got for me and today with nothing between nothing between nothing between you you and the Lord, the Lord will give you everything you need in abundance today in Jesus' name. Let's rise up, let's rise up and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I come to you. I come with desire. I come with passion. I come with thirst. I am thirsty, Lord. I am thirsty, Lord. And everything you have for me, you're going to give unto me open your mouth and talk to the lord don't listen to any strange voice extraneous voice and don't see any strange sight don't let anything come before between you and the almighty god and what he has promised to do he will do in your life open your mouth open your mouth and tell the lord let your prayer come from your heart let your prayer come deep from your soul and let 
accept your prayer come because you are thirsty because you need the forgiveness salvation so precious if you are not saved now when are you going to be saved why will you allow anyone to take the opportunity of salvation away from you let all the earth keep silence for before him the Lord is in his holy temple the Lord in his holy sanctuary and he wants to say he wants to heal he wants to deliver he wants to set free and let those extraneous voices be silenced before him tell the Lord tell the Lord and say Lord here am I Lord here am I with all my heart with all my soul with all my being I want the forgiveness I want the pardon I want the healing I want the freedom I want the holiness I want the sanctification Lord here I am here I am no other thing will catch my interest no other thing will catch my sight no other thing will distract me what you have for me is what I come for what you have for me is what I come for give it to me Lord give it to me Lord faithfully see that call it you who also will do it faithful 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 is faithfulness reaches unto heaven and it reaches unto all generations faithfully see that call it you he will do it faithful faithfully see he saves faithfully see he forgives faithfully see he sets free faithfully see he heals and delivers and faithfully see he breaks every you faithful is he he makes us holy holy follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man no woman no boy no girl will see the lord it takes holiness holiness of heart holiness in your soul holiness in your thoughts holiness in your planning holiness in your decisions holiness in your work holiness in everything you do holiness everywhere you find yourself without that holiness no man shall see the Lord tell the Lord nothing between nothing between Lord my heart my life my soul my whole plan everything for you i want to live for your glory i want to live in the power of the spirit of god i don't want to play games with my christian experience I want the real thing, the virtue of the Lord that brings peace in the heart, the reality of holiness experience in the heart. I want the real thing, the power of the Holy Ghost. And I will not take chances or allow anyone to take this heavenly provision away from me I don't allow a gambler gambling gambling with their souls to gamble with the provision the Lord has made for me Tell the Lord. Give me what you have for me. Forgiveness. Give me, Lord, I know you have it for me. Freedom. Freedom. 
that the yoke of backsliding be broken. The yoke of apostasy be broken. The yoke of falling and remaining in a falling stage. Let that yoke be broken. And let me have the freedom and the liberty of the children of God. Free to live. Free to rise. Free to run. Run the race. Free. Free to do everything I know Christ has commanded me. Free to live in holiness without allowing a gambler who is gambling with heaven to hinder me, to block my way, to stop me praying. Do not allow a lost man, lost to eternity, lost to reality, and lost to definite experience in Christ. Don't allow the lost man, the lost woman, to grab you down from the altar of prayer so that you can be lost like him. Ask him, ask, shall be given thee. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. He says, I am come, that they might have life, and a day might have that life abundantly. Don't stay at the superficial surface. Don't abide in your backsliding stage. Religious, but not righteous. traditional but not transformed having a name that you leave but the nature of Christ the nature of the holy God of heaven is not there this is your chance don't play with it don't gamble with it and have the power, the power for a new life, the power for a spotless life, and the power for a servicing life, serving life. No be tired, no power without prayer. No unction without prayer. No strength without prayer. No 
they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run. They will not be weary. They will walk. They will not faint. The Lord is waiting for you. Behold, he calleth you. Behold, he calleth you. Respond. Come. Your eyes are blind to your future. Come. Your eyes are blind to his provision for you. Come. He calls you. Your eyes are blind to the possibilities of grace. Come. He calls you. It will be unto you according to your faith. Not according to your feeling. According to your faith. Believe. is provided everything. Forgiveness. High. Deep. Wide. Freedom, deep and high. Fullness, inexhaustible. Peace within you. Purity. That it grants. It'll purge, purify your heart. Power. Power. Irresistible. They'll grant unto you. Believe him and trust him. Have confidence in him, he cannot fail. In Jesus' name we pray. You know something I discovered? If somebody is moving, running, or driving a car, and then you stop him, he cannot stop immediately. He still move the momentum of the force driving him of the car is driving even when you step on the brake it will take some time to stop I discover when people are praying if they're really into the prayer the momentum of the prayer the fire in the prayer the passion in the prayer when you say in jesus name we pray it will be almost impossible to stop immediately when we're praying with our heart with our mind with our soul when we're deep into that prayer and when we go beyond the supernatural 
our stopping will not be as immediate as that. And I want to counsel you, when you pray, pray. When you pray, let your heart, your mind, your soul, everything you've got, a passion, let it be there so that it's not just that you are watching them. So immediately we're saying, just now we'll pray and everything is quenched. Let's go beyond this superficiality in our prayer. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. A praying man is a powerful man. A praying church is a powerful church. But where you have agents and things stopping the time of prayer and the passion to pray, those people who are the agents of stopping the prayer of the church, they are the destroyers of the church. They are the people that weaken the church. The people and the people who are behind anywhere they are. And when we're praying, they want to stop the prayer. And when we say in Jesus' name, they have reconditioned the church to just stop like that. They are destroyers. They are the enemies of the church. They should repent if they don't. God will deal with anyone that wants to kill the church. You kill the prayer life. You kill the church. You kill the passion, the vision. You kill the church. And you kill the go-getters in the church. The people who have all their heart, all their mind. And they want to bring the church back to holiness. Anyone behind the curtain wanting to kill the church, the Lord will kill him before the church dies. Deeper life, we didn't raise up the church. God didn't raise up the church for a stranger to come from the camp of the devil to come and quench our fire, quench our power, quench our zeal if you're a worker anyone anyone walking anywhere and you are the agent of satan to reduce the church to no nonentity no power no prayer no passion and we're to worship you rather than worshiping our god the lord will remove you out of the way now Ask the Lord, they will not stop our prayer. We're not people that can be stopped by agents of Satan. Our God, our Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Master is greater than any messenger of the devil behind any curtain. Open your mouth, open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, this church will not die in prayerlessness. This church will not die fearing man, worshiping man. This church will have Christ as savior as number one in our heart will exalt him will seek first the kingdom of god but will not seek to please man fear man they want to beat us they want to harass us let them go ahead we're not worshiping persecutors we're not worshipping Satan-inspired men or women. We're worshipping a heavenly God, heavenly Christ, heavenly power, having everything that we need. And pastor there, if you know anyone among the people who are working with you, under you, that they want to kill the church, get them out of the way before they kill the prayer power of the church.
electronics don't give loudspeaker to people who are praying they're not praying to me they're not praying to us so we don't want to hear any microphone carrying their prayer let them pray to god and don't be used as part of the agents that will be transmitting their prayers to us to attend to stop the move of God in our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we well, thank you for this day. We love you. We honor you. We exalt you. We appreciate your love that you have provided all these blessings for us. And help us, Lord, that you will not allow anyone a so-called brother, a so-called sister, a so-called worker to stop and to gamble and to rubbish all the provision of heaven that you have for us. Lord, we pray, get them out of our way in Jesus' name. With all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, Lord, we come and we desire from you the forgiveness you have. The freedom you have, the salvation you have, the sanctification you have, the holiness you have, the power of the Holy Ghost you have for every one of us. Grant everyone, give everyone, supply everyone in Jesus' name. Let the blessing of forgiveness be real of freedom be real that lord you take hypocritical lifestyle away from everyone that says he has got the forgiveness and the freedom let salvation be real let grace be real let the purity of life be real and let the power of the Holy Ghost be real in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Let everyone turn aright, transformed, and bring glory to the name of the Savior. Glory to the name of the Sanctifier. Glory to the name of the Baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Let our lives move forward, move on in the direction of your plan, in the direction of the redemption you have for the whole church in Jesus' name. Those who are sick, touch them and heal them. Those who are depressed, touch them and deliver them. Those who have gone astray, touch them and renew their lives. Bring your blessing that is visible, practical, that can be seen. Bring that blessing upon every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another amen. amen. God bless everyone.